Good evening, everybody. Let's stand together. There's a line in this song that says, Shout it out, glory in the highest. He loves your praise tonight. Praise him. Praise him, all ye people. Amen. Join us.
a hallelujah tonight.
up all over the place. Holy Spirit, we are so grateful. We don't even have enough words, enough sentences, enough emotion to describe your ever loving, tender care of each of us. Oh, when we're at our lowest, you're there. And when we're at our highest, you're there. And, and everything in between. You connect us to his anointing. You connect us to presence. You connect us to resources that help each of us down the road of life. Simply, we cannot do this alone. 
and you know that. You're the door. You're the door. We give you all. You are our door to everywhere. But all the people that you use, the resources, the information, the knowledge, mm, we praise you tonight. Oh, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. I'm able to be here. Come on, say, I'm able to be here. I'm not disabled. I'm here. I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to go glory to glory. I thank you tonight for my salvation, for the price that you paid. I'm aware of the price, and I'm grateful for the price. I drink the cup tonight. Not your will, but mine. Not my will, but yours. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, give him a shout. Woo! <laughs> wow. Come on, give somebody a nice hug tonight and tell them you're glad they're in the service tonight here in Cranberry Township. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, we thank you, dear Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my. I want to see who's here tonight for the very, very first time. I believe we have some first-time people here tonight. Where might you be? Raise your hand. Come on. Come on, ma'am. Stand up. I want to know who you are. Where are you from? I'm Pastor Barbara Leffler from North Huntington and Living Waters Church. Past, you're the pastor of Living Water. One of them. <laughs> How many do you have? Uh, four. Four pastors in Living Waters Church. Yes. That's our one, right? Yes. Great to have you tonight. Wonderful it's to great have you. Great to be tonight. here. Mm -hmm. Who was first time back here? Yes, sir. Hold on. What's your name? Aaron Hilgen from Chippewa Township. Chippewa. 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 I, I couldn't understand the way that was. Okay, how, where, how far away is that? Oh, it's about 45 minutes. Okay. All right. Great to have you tonight. Thank Great you. to have you. First timers tonight. Anybody else? Right here, young man. Um, evangelist from representing Blainsburg Bible Church. Hassan you look Reed. like an evangelist. You just look. <laughs> brother. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I might let you take my offering tonight. I don't know. He just looks like an evangelist. <laughs> I receive in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. I'm going to give my tithe and offerings. <laughs> so where, where, are you, where are you located? I'm uh, representing Blainsburg Bible Church in, uh, in uh, PA. Waynesburg. Blainsburg. Blainsburg. Yeah, I'll have to give you a card after service. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me about your ministry. Tell me. So we, uh, we go to the highways and the byways as Jesus Christ commanded. We go out to the poverty-stricken uh, neighborhoods to the highest crime rate where no one wants to go. And we go out there and we, uh, we're, if, we're called to be, if we're called to be martyrs for God, then that's what it is. But we are we let, spirit led, not men led. And we are led by the spirit and protected by the spirit, guided by the spirit in Jesus' name. And I go out and I speak and I, I talk to the, I, men, I mentor the youth and I just want to be used by God and be more like Jesus. Wow. So, so who's this lady? Are you with him? This is, well, uh, supposed to, who's this? It's the young lady, Sophia, that I'm courting right now. You're courting her? Yes. Yes. Uh, future wife. <laughs> we're, don't worry. We're keeping did, it did holy. Did you know that? Name. That you're a future wife? That's what he keeps pretending. That's what he keeps telling you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Lord willing. And we're keeping it holy. <laughs> keeping it holy. This guy knows everything to say. <laughs> it's great. I, um, I was actually anticipating coming here super excited. She said I was like a kid in a candy store. And, um, and I just found out about you recently. Uh, I went to a restaurant, and I met a, uh, a waitress there. And she comes here. Her right there in the red yeah. shirt, yeah. and she comes here, says the Holy Spirit moves, and um, I was on a men's retreat at my church, and I told her, Lord willing, I will get here. I started searching you up on YouTube. My spirit uh, bared witness instantly, and I was like, I don't care what happens, God. If it's in your will, I'm getting here in Jesus' name. Did, did he ask you if you wanted to come, or he just said, he did, or he said, you're just coming with me? <laughs> the second one. He asked you. And so how, long, how long have you guys been dating? Whew, like, we, I've known her for eight months. I'm really, uh, 
I've been I had a relationship with her father uh, first. Well, that's good. Yeah, and um, I asked him for his blessing before I ever sat down on the pew next to her. Oh. And um, oh, that's sweet. and I ask every time to sit on the pew with her. Uh, you what? I ask for his blessing every time I sit on the pew with her. You do. Yes. What do you say to him? What do you say? Well, I pull him to the side and I say, "I love you, brother. Please don't kill me." <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to have the honor. I say I love you and I respect you. I would love to have the honor to sit by your wife. I want to keep a hold. Here's how you do it right here. In Jesus' name. And what's he say to you? He says that uh, you have 72 more hours until church starts. I'll give you an answer then. <laughs> but it's been yes every time. And he also gave me the blessing to take her on our first date. Today is our second date. Today's your second date. Yes, sir. Yeah. Which is here, it wouldn't be a better place. So thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. In Jesus' name. I'm usually not lost for words, but I am right now. So, so your first day? Can you say where your first day was? Um, Kodiak's. We sat outside. It was in uh, Charleroi or Belle Vernon area, and um, we sat outside by the waterfall, and there, there was a little. Uh, I forget what it's called. It's like Hawaiian. It's like a sun blocker. And uh, we had some, some cheese steak french fries. I had a big old burger. Uh, it was a beautiful night. She said next time the food was so good she wants to eat on the inside. Next time. <laughs> it's too pure. It's just too leave it to beaver. Come on, somebody. <laughs> a little bit of leave it to beaver. We could have a party here tonight. That's so great. That's wonderful. And you're and you you're called to be wherever he's called. Is that right? Can I hear you talk? Come on, stand up. I want to hear you talk. <laughs> Maybe the last time you get to say anything. So, so I've actually I've been called to preach, um, but I, I'm waiting for that that green light from God to start doing that. So. Wow. And she also dabbles in uh, deliverance ministry as well. She dabbles in deliverance. Oh, she's, she's very sharp. She's very sharp on it. She's sharpening my iron when it comes to that. They're not supposed to make you feel old. They're supposed to make you feel, get, I got to get on fire. Quit seeing things as old and young. Quit, stop that. Go by pilot light. Is there a fire in me? You know, you've gone through a lot more life than they have. You've had more reasons to get hit and knocked down and a few broken kneecaps in life. I get it. But the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times in one day and seven times he's back up again. That means the resilience of a believer. Come on, say the resilience of any born again believer is off over the top. That means there's a no quit sign that we all wear. Now, I didn't say you don't feel like quitting. I feel like quitting probably three times a day. Come on, somebody. <laughs> when you run into the mountains that you have to face because they're just different. The money that you need, the, the, the staff that you need, all the resources that you need. And you think, wow, did I really want to grow like this? Well, of course you do because you're, you're in it for people. But you've got to remind yourself of that. You know, and here, so here's these two. They're on the other end of this. And they're so sweet. I just think they're a wonderful couple. You better hurry and marry her, though. You better hurry up. Hey, Amen. Um, I'm, her father offered a, a Galilean wedding. I was like, pray, Lord, please not. But hope Galilean wedding. Yeah, where you uh, where, where you guys get married, but you can't see your wife for a year, and it's up to the father's discretion. <laughs> <laughs> I asked I asked God for a hasty process. <laughs> Sit down. I can't talk to you no more. <laughs> Sit down. God bless you, brother. Give them a big God bless you. Come on. Where are you from? Where are you from? Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant? Yeah. Okay. All of you from Mount Pleasant? Uh, yeah, we both are. This is your? My fiance. Your another fiance. Yeah. A week and a half, we'll be married. You're going to what? Uh, uh, September 22nd, Lord willing, we'll be married. You're going to be married on what date? September 22nd. September 22nd. Wonderful. Yeah. You're excited about it? Yeah, I am. Uh -huh. Okay. If you are, we are, right? Amen. And, and you're going to get married where in Mount Pleasant? No, uh, Geneva on the Lake. Up Geneva, Geneva on now. the Lake. Yeah. What is with all these people getting all these creative marriage places? I'll tell you what. Great to have you tonight. I'm not Great. sure if that's more exciting or the Hawaiian trip afterward. We're, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> we got to step our game. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Man, he is creating. These people are creating a fire here tonight. Right. 
Great to have you. Right here. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Zephan Johnson. Uh, I'm originally from Utah. Okay. Just, uh, moved out here to Ohio about a month ago. Um, there was uh, a couple that you prophesied over, I guess, last time they were here. They have Living Waters Church in Ohio. that They bought the old Catholic church. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, God told me to sell everything I owned one night before I even knew where I was going. And I'm like, I think you're missing it here, Lord. You know? <laughs> and I kept selling stuff before I even knew what I was doing and um, came over from Utah. Uh, it's just kind of, it was divine the way the whole Lord, the Lord set the whole thing up. Uh, I do deliverance ministry as well. Um, uh, recover, help with recovering addicts, go into the jails and minister to guys wow. back home because wow. we have a stronghold of addiction. We're like a hub. And mm -hmm. so um, when you fight addiction, it's a spiritual thing. You, can, you know, a lot of people want to medicate it, but you're mm -hmm. medicating a spiritual battle. And so awesome. I've just been out here trying to help them lift the church up off the ground and build a church. So great to have your first name again, Zephan. Zephan. Great to have you tonight, Zephan. Wonderful. Thank Thanks for being here. Beautiful. Somebody else first time. Amazing. Some of these people that are here tonight right here. Yes, ma'am. Uh. Yeah, it's my first time. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm from uh, Conneaut Lake area. Conneaut Lake. I, I, I've been in that area most of my youth, and my grandparents had a cabin up there on, on the Shenango River, yeah, up in Pimatuming, Pimatuming Lake. You've heard of Pimatuming, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great to have you tonight. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else first time? No, 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 no. Oh, way over here. Yes, sir. How you doing? My name is John Ricky. John Ricky. Okay. And um, this is my first time here. I'm um, originally from New Jersey, and I moved here like 20 years. And <clears throat> these are my two ladies right here. Well, explain that, sir. Just explain. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting off to a rocky start here, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's my first time in. Now, explain the two ladies. We'll tell you if you can stay at the rest of the meeting or not. <laughs> This is my uh, <clears throat> daughter's mom, Doreen. Your daughter's mother, mother, Doreen. And this is my daughter, Elizabeth. Okay. And what brings you here? You're here from New Jersey? Uh, well, I'm, I live here in Pittsburgh now. Okay. Uh, tw about 20 years now. Okay, good. Yes. We, we brought him with us. You have healed my, we've been here and through the Holy Spirit has healed my daughter. It's a testimony, her heart, she had a hole in it. And come here, come here, come she here. She's 16, good. This she's girl right 20. here. She's 20, you were 16? Come here. Tell me, tell me what happened. I had a hole in my heart. Wait, get a mic. Gosh, you gotta get with the program here. <laughs> so I had um, a hole in my heart when I was a baby. Um, and we went to several hospitals and they didn't say anything. So we went back the other day to a different doctor and she could not hear my heart murmur. You came here, though. You skipped a visit here. Yeah. You came how many times? Stop saying that there was a hole in her heart. Really? Yeah. And it is gone. It's gone. Stop saying there's a hole. Because I was telling you, well, she has a hole in her You told me, stop saying that. You know, I'm going to tell you, and, and you can open up your Bible, and you can pick whatever gospel you want, but a lot of the miracles did not come because he didn't touch most of the people. But he did give them an instruction. See, if I can't change your thinking, I can't change you. If I can't change the words coming out of your mouth, I can't change you. If Jesus can't change your thinking, see, then you're stuck. Every sin begins with a thought, and every move of faith begins with a thought. The devil didn't come through Eve's spirit. He came through her soul, came into her reasoning faculties. See, if the devil can get you to reason about your sickness or your addiction... Well, you know, I got on these drugs because, you know, I was in Vietnam and that was the thing you did then and we were back in the jungle. You're reasoning with it. You're justifying it. Just admit that it's wrong. It affected your life. It's contaminated your children. Let's get free. But we want to take the long way around. We want to give some story as to why, why, why. We're all weak in ourselves. You know, we're, we're our, 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 our nature isn't that strong. We get born again, even in a born again state. 
How many people are just overcome in a born again state because they don't feed, they don't get their mind renewed? The Bible says your money and your health will prosper according to your soul. As your soul. Come on, say, as my soul. Say it again, as my soul, so goes my money and my body. That means, what it means, as your soul, as you get your thinking changed. You know, you got to get that thinking changed. I mean, if you're going to keep thinking the same way, then you're going to be in the same spot a year later, two years later, and it becomes a curse to you. One of the greatest things that could happen here, besides getting your body healed, is to change your mind about something. That mental shift is one of the greatest, biggest things you could ever have happen to you. Call it an attitude. Attitudes are born in the mind. That's where they come from. They're born in your thinking. And that can come down from a family curse. My dad thought like this. It can come from Harvard University. It can come from being so in love with the president that you turn your head to wrong. You know, that you drink the cup of compromise. But when you read the Bible, you can't hide. I can't hide. We just can't hide. You know, I was in a church of 4,000 people. Balcony was packed. Downstairs was packed. 4,000 people. And I, and I don't, when you look at 4,000 people, you don't usually see one person. It's just a mass of people. And I stepped to the podium to start the service. And, and my eyes fell on one man and one woman. The man I knew and the woman he was with wasn't his wife. And I just, my, out of all these people, I fell on this guy. No, it could have been his sister, could have been his cousin. I didn't feel that. But I didn't have any time to think about it because I had to get on with the service. These people are waiting for, for ministry. But every once in a while, I'd take a peek over in this large auditorium, and, and there's, there they were. Well, now I kind of thought they weren't brother and sister because she was all over them in church. And I thought, okay, I you know, registered them, thinking, well, that, I know that's not his wife. And, and the last I checked, they were in one of my meetings in Tampa, and they were, but that's not her. Okay, well, I got to get, get out of this, and boom. Well, that week, he comes into my office, and my secretary said, hey, so-and-so's here to see you. I said, yeah, I'm interested. I'm glad he's here. Bring him in. He said, uh, he said, you're judging me. I said, pardon me? He was real defensive. He said, you're judging me. I said, judging you for what? He said, I know you saw me. Now, how he knew that I saw him... <laughs> Come on, that's a needle in a haystack. I'm up on a stage. I'm just this little figure up there. All these people. No, it was his conviction. He said, I know you saw me. And I said, wait a minute. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, you know, in the service, you saw me with another woman. I said, I did. I, I certainly did. He said, you're judging me for that. I said, well, I, I don't know. Who was that woman? Can you tell me who the woman was? It's none of your business. He said, but you have no right to judge me. So I didn't know what to do. I said, he really angered me. I mean, he really did. He was pushing me to the limit. So I just got my Bible. I think I told some of you this story. Here, young man. I, I, he, I, I, I took my Bible, happened to be sitting right there. I actually threw it. I threw it up in the air like this so he could see it. Sometimes God has to do something that, something radical that gets you undivided. And it landed on my desk, and it's flat like this. I said, hey, man, I said, I don't judge you, but that book judges all of us. Wow. <laughs> you pass the inspection of that book, I'm okay with you. I don't know who that woman was. I, 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 I don't even need to know. You know, or you wouldn't be here. If that was all clean, you wouldn't be here. Are you that bothered? And he fell to his knees. Fell to his knees. He said, well, 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 my wife, I don't want to hear it. Just tell me you're wrong. Just tell me you're, you're sorry. Tell me, don't give me, don't give me all that. Mm. You know, that's like catching somebody breaking in your house and they're telling you the whole time I didn't mean to. <laughs> well, how'd that window get broke? 
I don't know. I didn't mean to do it. Well, you did it. Yeah, but what if there's a demon involved? Then just say, you know, something made me do it. But come clean. Walk in the light as he's in the light. If you keep things in a recess, in a dark recess, you never get delivered from them. They talk to each other when you leave a meeting like this and they say, Bob, we, we escaped another church service. We got away from another preacher or from another father-in-law. You've got to bring stuff out here. Why? So that it can never be used against you again. Come on, say, once it's out here, it can never be used against you. And that blood touches that, presence touches that. People may want to remind you of it, but people aren't the ones that, that take care of you, bless you. So important that you understand that. Amazing. And, and, and you, you, know, you had a hole in your heart, and, and, and I, what, your mother, this your mother? Yes. Did you remember me saying that? Or? Yeah. So what did I say again? One there more is thing? no hole. Well, how can I? I'm only a preacher, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I'm, I'll preach on this. You need to hear this. This is for all of you. So I'm a preacher. I don't, there's no x-ray to prove. I can't say that. But I had a move. There's a move. Come on, say that move. move. Oh, you didn't say it right. Come on, say that move. move. See how much better you can be? <laughs> that move came through me. That, that swift flow of the Holy Spirit. I got to go with that. And without even knowing the doctor, not knowing her or the x-ray, I spoke a word of faith. Yeah, but isn't that dangerous? No, dangerous is leaving her with a hole in the heart. Dangerous is leaving that guy in a wheelchair. Dangerous is leaving that person think that they'll never be in love again. Jesus showed up at the well. He knew the woman was married five times. He didn't show up to break her spirit. He shows up to, what? to break into her life and rescue her from a hopeless life. Only he can offer you living water when you're drinking dead water. In dead relationships, going to dead places to listen to dead music that makes the top of the charts. Dead, dead, and more dead. Come on, somebody say, I need the Lord. Come on. And, and so that, so what did you think when you heard that? What did you think? It was just real. It was what? Real. Real. To me, my mom. So you must have took that and believed that. Absolutely. And every time we went to the doctor and they listened, it was so heartbreaking. And her and I are going, yes. <laughs> every time you went That's to the right. doctor. Every time we had, it was like she had a cold or something. We'd always let them listen to her heart. We wouldn't say a thing to see what they would say. Heart you can't have a hole without a heart. Oh my gosh. See, that's what you need to do is what she did. Or what, what the Holy Spirit through me did to her. Put yourself in the line of fire. Quit getting in front of people that love you but don't say anything. Get in the line of fire with people that move in gifts. That believe in another dimension. That believe that the gifts are for today. Come on, say all nine, all nine gifts, all the gifts in Romans, the, gifts in Romans. the motivational gifts, Romans. the power gifts, power. they're for today. And I need them to equip me to help anybody that I'm going to help. So, so whenever Peter fished all night, pay attention to this, whenever Peter fished all night and caught nothing, What I believe is he caught nothing because there was nothing there. They knew how to fish. They made a living fishing. So here comes the preacher. What's he know? He's not a fisherman. He's not a fisherman. He comes right in behind them, right when they just took the net out of the water. The net was still soaking wet from the water. And what did Jesus say? Drop your net. What did Peter say? Lord, we've fished all night. Drop the net. Here, what did he say? Nevertheless. There was an attitude there. There's nothing there. But I'll do it because you say to do it. 
Because he dropped the net, God put the fish there. They weren't there. They weren't there. Come on, say they weren't there. Drop the net. They're there. Oh, my God. It's, it's, that, it's that corresponding action that you do that makes something be there. That piece of real estate you're trying to acquire. There's nothing that can be withheld from you if you don't quit and stay, if you stay in faith. Not stay in church. A lot of people stay in church, but they're not in faith. It's staying in faith. That's why I think I said last night, he said, rise, take up your bed. Nobody preaches on the bed part. They just preach on the healing part. Why didn't Jesus say, arise and walk out of here? Why did he stress, take up thy bed? Because the man found comfort. He found, they found comfort in play, being in a place of activity. But he was no longer in faith. You stay around those kind of people or that kind of group of people, for, you'll get lazy with your faith. You'll live off the choir. It's like living off government cheese. Do you want to live off government cheese your whole life? And then you complain because all oh, you got American. Do you have any cheddar? Any cheddar in there? And then, I like Swiss. Any Swiss coming down the line? <laughs> and then the, they are going, beggars can't be choosy. Well, number one, I'm not a beggar. And number two, I do have choice. I have choice to be blessed and not to be cursed. God's waiting for you to make a decision. To go beyond where your parents ever took you. To blow past your pastor. To blow past your favorite teacher and evangelist. And say, man, I'm going to conquer the land that God has given me. And you're going to have to really receive some things in faith. Now, when I say faith, I'm talking about they don't make any sense. I'm not a doctor. I shouldn't be saying to her, what did I say? There is no hole. You bet that we'll preach on this. I'll probably take your story all over the world. <laughs> What's your name? I want to get your name Elizabeth. right. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. How old are you? 20. 20. Just turned 20. Do you tell anybody about this? Everybody. Yes, everyone. <laughs> What do you tell them? That God healed me. Wow. And my mom got healed too. You got healed too? Well, I'm here today because um, two years ago, I was uh, diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer. And um, he brought me through. The what? The God brought me through. Wow. And, I'm, and I'm here today because I have a hip problem now. They're telling me I need a hip, a hip replacement. And when did, I won't you, get, when did you get healed of the cancer, though? I just kept praying to God because I know he healed my daughter. Wow. And I'm here. I lost all my hair. I had everything, you know, two years. Once you get a, once you get a healing, once, I mean, once you get a real healing, it affects you your whole life. You, you're always checking, and maybe I don't have to go to the doctor for this. Maybe God can take care of it first. If you don't, then if you have to end up going to a doctor, so be it. Miracles in medicine work together. They can work together. But the Christians today, you don't want to be a sissy Christian. Your head hurts a little bit, so you run for ibuprofen. Didn't even say a prayer. Didn't even slap your hand up there and say, in the name of Jesus. Come on, let the devil know that something is you're retaining knowledge. You're in anointed services. Something's on you when you leave this meeting. I, I believe that you leave this meeting at least for three days. There shouldn't be a devil anywhere near your block. Because you should be talking in tongues for at least three days. I need to add to my story because this is how God works. For out of the blue, I always wanted a horse all my life. So I never got one. Okay. I took her up there for lessons because she was going to a, a horse camp. And here I ended up getting a horse. I knew nothing about a horse, you know, I always wanted one. He gave me my heart's desire, <laughs> honest to goodness, in preparation for the cancer. So when I got cancer, that got me out of bed to go up and see my horse. 
<laughs> and to work with that horse. That's purpose. That's good. It was. She was my, she's my horse's desire. And tell you, we do tricks and everything together. You and the horse? I perform with her. Uh, I've never done anything like that in my life. Wow. And I know that's from God. He sent me that to get me through. I love it. Give God big praise. Come on. I love it. I love it. That's... You know, if I didn't come here to preach, I'd come here just to hear the stories. There's not a month that we're here that something doesn't just go, wow. God's trying to really impress all of us. But you have to remain impressionable. Don't, get, don't become that stick in the mud like a lot of church people. I tell them about a miracle that happened. They go, well, that's Jesus. Amen, brother. Keep it up. I'm thinking, I don't ever want you on my team. I don't want you near me. Don't even pray for me. They won't work. If you're not impressed with God, wow. But you're out there buying stocks of AI. Oh, you're buying stocks because, man, you're impressed with AI. and You're impressed with where, where AI is going to go in the market. And I'm involved in AI. And, but you're not investing in the kingdom. Come on. Come on, get with the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. That kingdom is the Greek word basilalia. Come on, say that, basil. basil. See, you can speak Greek now, see that? <laughs> it means the rule of God. Doesn't even mean seek Jesus. Doesn't even mean seek church. It means seek whatever God's trying to rule in your life at the moment. More important than your healing may be losing some weight. More important than the healing may be, come on, shows you give some money. You have never fully supported the kingdom with money. Sometimes God wants to see you. What do you say? You draw near me, I'll draw near you. Oh, somebody say something here. Come on. It can't be give me, give me, give me. It's got to be, come on, I want, I want to give back. And all you can give back with is what you have. Whatever strength you have, whatever time you have, whatever money resource you have. The Bible says you can't give what you don't have, but you can give out of what you do have. It's really, really important that you hear that tonight. I think a lot of people are just trying to get a cheap healing. You know, you've heard me say it many times. Catherine used to say, we'd be in a small group and she would say, I want to tell you what, is, what cheap is. Cheap is just really, really cheap and nothing cheap will last nothing cheap you know that you know that from a lot of your experiences how'd you get healed sir uh, we had to climb up on a roof and how'd you get how'd, I had to climb this tree how'd you get here uh, he had to insult me and tell me I was a dog come on he had to say I was the dog I thought man I was ready to leave that church but I said, no, my daughter's more important. I don't care what you call me. I've got to get my daughter free. Stayed focused on the prize. Come on, put your hands up. I've got to stay focused on the prize at hand. I've got to quit getting so easily offended and so turned off by some of the things that happen in church life. Churches aren't perfect. It wasn't the day I walked in. I need to quit getting so offended by what people are saying and how they're living and their judgment of me. I've got to stay uh, focused of what I'm after and hold on to God and it will come to pass. Come on, give God a big shout. Wow. So, so you're, how old are you? Are, how old are you? 20. 20. So what do you do? You work somewhere? Mm -hmm. What do you do? I do office work uh -huh. and it's I started uh, three days a week. So what do you do? Do you type? Do you? I do uh, shedding papers and. You do what? Sh like papers. Okay. And machine. And then I um, say, um, how may I help you? And then I answer the phone. Hmm. And I put love your it. hands up. He's going to put your hands up. He's going to give you an anointing beyond your skill set. The favor of God will do more for you than any trained education you're going to get. There's favor on you. There's great story in favor. Put your hands high. Come on. That's, don't, that's half surrender. That means you're half dead. Come on. Put your hands the whole way up. Put your hands up, everybody. Come on. 
Hands up. Come on. Your hands are up. Come on. This is amazing. It's amazing. She goes back and there's no hole in the heart. Oh, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right now. Come on, everybody. I need you, Lord. mom thanks for being here now you got healed of the cancer but you're limping there's something wrong with your leg no, no, I don't. I need a hip replacement. you what now hip replacement. oh you're here to get that yes I am at what hospital I'm not going to a hospital I'm going to God <laughs> I tell people all the time when you go to Jesus for healing you keep your clothes on I may like that version of it. You keep your clothes on and, and you don't get knocked out on purpose. I don't mind going to sleep, but I don't like being like put to sleep. I don't like that being put to sleep stuff. When I was nine and in the hospital here in Pittsburgh, they didn't use the needle. It was a big rubber mask. And they put that rubber mask over you and you could smell that ether coming into your bone. That was a scary, man, that was scary stuff. Whoa. Hey, this is great, isn't it? Yeah. And then I'll be doing a nursing program, too. You've been doing what? I'm going, to be a, I'm going to be a nurse's aide program. A nurse's aide. Yeah, I was going for school for it. It's mighty touch. It's mighty touch. Oh. Wow. Come on, give God a big shout. I'll tell you what. Wow. 20 years old. 20 years old. Should the Lord tarry? I don't think he will, but should he tarry? I mean, how young is that to get moving in this with a testimony? I'm telling you, you got to tell, we got to tell what's happened to you. Give God a big shot. Ma'am, what are you up for back here? You own standing up? First time? Is that why you're standing up? You're from Ohio? I also want, like, produce, um, Lord use me in every, everything that he has for me. You want him to use you? Wanting, well, he's used me before, but... Um, uh, uh, you may hold it. So, um, I've been studying revelations almost all my life, too. Yeah. I want to teach that. Okay. But I want an anointing on my life. I want a double portion of anointing on my life. Yeah. I want to sit on fire. Well, good for you. Good for you. You want to do stop this double portion stuff. It's stupid. Oh. <laughs> no, I'll tell you why. Because it's old covenant. You're grieving the Holy Spirit every time you say double. Come on, everything up to Malachi. That was Old Testament. That was Elisha. I want double what Elijah has. But when the Holy Spirit came, the greatest sound that ever hit the earth, the sound that shuddered through the underworld, 
Come on. The sound that disturbed every devil and disease and every curse is when that Holy Ghost was turned loose. What did Jesus say? Now you get the Spirit without measure. Come on, say without measure. Say it again, without measure. Now, I, I, I don't mean to jump at her like that, but that's a big one in our training, in our healing school. You say, I, but I don't understand. Let me make it simple. Okay, if I have a $100 bill up here, and I say, okay, I'm going to give you, uh, what? Double portion. Then that means there's 200 Or if I go over here and say, I have a $100 bill. You can have as many of these as you want. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Say it, unlimited measure. Unlimited measure. Greater works. As far as the eye can see. Don't limit yourself and don't let anybody else limit you. Because all everything God has for you is evolving. It's as you're more faithful, then he trusts you more. See, the point of it is God just don't trust us too much. He loves us, but trust you earn. Love you give, but trust you earn. You can love your husband, but not trust him. I mean, don't, I shouldn't say that. That's not the right thing to say. <laughs> You can love a lot of people, but you wouldn't trust your children with them or your money. Somebody was on TV and they they gave their whole ministry to another preacher. Some, what, some 20, 30 years ago, trusting that preacher. And the preacher took it. Sometimes, sometimes trust is not. And then once you get your trust broken, then you have to get it back. You know, just, just know that God loves you. But boy, he, he wants you to learn to trust him. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not going to lie to you ever. Ever. Yeah, but why didn't he heal my dad? I don't know that answer. Neither do you. We don't have all the answers. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The things that are revealed belong to man, but the secret things belong to God. That hidden will that he has, only he knows. Only that he knows. I wouldn't be here if my brother hadn't gotten killed by a drunk driver. I wouldn't be standing here tonight doing this. I was running fast the other way. 19 years old, and I didn't want anybody to tell me what to do when my brother was killed because I was the first one to know that. A real supernatural happening with that. And after he was killed, and I had to go identify the body, he was four years younger than me. Catherine Coleman had Maggie call my house. I don't know how she even found out. I don't know. I, to this day, I'd ask my grandmother, how did Catherine find out about this? Nobody would tell me the answer, but there she was on the phone. You know what she said to me? Now you'll do what you're supposed to do. Now you'll do it. That sweet little old woman that <laughs> liked to pray for people. She said, now you'll do it. I didn't like that, but it was true. Whatever God has to do to get you where he wants you. There's a psalm, Psalm 32, it says this, that God likes to guide you with his eye. But if that don't work, then he'll put a bit like in a horse's mouth. So that little thing about that big that you put into a horse, when you, when you see the cowboy movies and they go, like, that thing hurts that horse like you wouldn't believe, the pain. Not, killer, not killing pain, but just enough pain to get that horse to move. And God says, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to let uncomfortable things come into your life to get you there and to get you doing this and to get you. He's going to try his best to, to do with you why he saved you. He saved you with purpose. Healing is just the beginning of that. Come on, getting you delivered is just the beginning of that. He wants you to fall in love with the, 
the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He wants you to be able to know that Bible so that you can stand for what anybody ever quit as much as possible. Many things that I don't know, but I, I try to know them. Or I say, I'll get back with you and let me research that a little bit. People ask a lot of difficult questions. That's why we walk, come on, say we walk by faith. Not by sight. Not by your knowledge. But by faith. Come on, give God a big shot. I'll tell you what. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow. Any, any testimonies tonight? So we have to have a couple of testimonies. Yeah, come, 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 come. No, wait, no, we got yours. We got yours. Come, come. Yes. Anybody else over here? Any testimonies over here? Yes. Come quickly, sweetheart. Yes. What happened, ma'am? Mm, my husband and I were in a rear-ended in a car accident last August. And we came to your service in July, and I was just sitting there, and you said, um, God's healing these. And I had found out I had a torn meniscus. A torn meniscus. So I put my hand on my knee, and I just kept praising God and talking to him and listening to your CDs on the Psalms and the um, Gospels. And it, I you can You got walk. the Gospel one. Oh, I got both. I got most of them. <laughs> yeah, we, we're going to do some new stuff. People are asking me, where's your new stuff at? I said, just save your money. They're going to be very expensive, the new stuff. <laughs> so, so now, Pastor, I've been having a problem with itching all over my body. I've seen my dermatologist who wanted to put me on cortisone. I've seen my PCP. I've seen my integrative doctor. I've had IV vitamin C. I've had all these different supplements, and my body is just rejecting them. Because you're troubled. Put your hands up. You're troubled. You're troubled. When your peace isn't there, you're troubled. So many diseases that are come because of the nervous system is troubled. There's no peace. Something you haven't made peace with. Something you're sensing for the future. Something that you're troubled about your children. It affects your central nervous system. Signals are sent to the brain and to the heart to the kidneys, to the spleen. Every organ in your body was created by the voice of God. Amen. Every organ. Every organ was created by the audible voice of the Master Himself. And when peace isn't there, peace is our umpire. Sometimes you don't know what's wrong. You just can't put your finger on but you just can't fit. And it's not that you did anything wrong that you know of. Sometimes you pick up a transfer from somebody else. But take time out and say, Lord, show me. This God we talk about is interactive. He's there for you to converse with. I'm not comfortable, Billy Burke, talking to invisible. I like people then, in, then see, they're going to be limited. You receive messages from the devil and he's invisible. He makes you afraid. You, you respond to that. He tempts you and you respond to that. He restricts your life and you respond to that. If you're going to respond to a bad spirit, respond to the Holy Spirit. Come on, put your hands up and say, there's nobody like the Holy Spirit. He's holy. And he works the purposes of God on this planet. Father's on the throne. Jesus at the right hand. Holy Ghost is on the earth. And they're all working in harmony. That I may have an abundant life. That I may be free from the law of sin and death. Come on, give God a big shout. Just that the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, give God a shout. Now, I could run around this room and we could have a quick meeting here. It could look like a lot more happens than really does. I like the slaying power. I've experienced it. I know that it's real. It's real. But what I like is a little bit of instruction. Without truth, this doesn't work. Because then you fall just to fall, and you're, you're not after truth. You shall know the truth. You shall know, the, and the truth...
What's going on here, ma'am? Here you are. How are you doing tonight? What happened? What happened last night? What happened last night? You tell me. I stood up. <laughs> you stood up? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what do you, what was it, how much better was it? About 30, 35%. What's that? How much? 30, 35%. 30, 35%. <laughs> Where was the biggest difference in what God did? Where was the biggest difference? In the pain? No, the pain got worse. But the pain, the, the pain came, went from here down into my legs. But that's because you hadn't I haven't used been that. using yeah. yeah, you hadn't used those muscles. Right. That's a good pain then. Yeah. but There's a uh, healing pain as well as a... But I could tell the pain that was up here left. Oh, my so, God. I expected the, the, the what? I expected my legs to be that way. You did, but I didn't expect. I expected. I, come I on. didn't expect all this to go away. Well, <laughs> well smile, come on, give me a smile with that. I saw you smiling there. So tell me, the husband, what's the big difference here? You see it? Well, she's been a lot better. She's sitting up straight in the chair over there. I don't know, and and uh, she's much better today. It just. A work in progress, I know, but uh, I'm very, very pleased with with her determination. Yes. What are you going to do when she's as tall as you? What are you going to do? Oh, geez. I'll get elevator shoes then. <laughs> I just won't wear heels. <laughs> well, you were already planning how to yeah. respond. I love it. Mm -hmm. Why not? <laughs> It's well, hard to stand in one place for too long. I've never had, you know, I've never... What do you want me to do? What, what do you want to do tonight? You tell me. Uh, I would like to get rid of the neuropathy in my hands, okay. if, that, if that's possible. It's possible through God, but... Nothing is it's impossible when you... Trust in God. Come on, nothing... Nothing, nothing is impossible. Trusting in his word. Beautiful. Hearken to the gods of the Is there anything? Is there anything to Well, in and his word. Oh, everything. Come on. Yes. Yes. This doesn't bother me at all that she's back. And in, if you're looking in the natural, it seems like, well, it doesn't seem like that much. But that's why I'm asking this in front of all of you. You hear what they're saying. There's much, much progress. So she's hungry enough to come back to get more. Some people are too proud. They're too proud. They think, I can't go back there because it don't look like it. It doesn't matter what it looks like to people. Amen. Some of the greatest miracles we've seen are worse than this. And just over one girl was over 11 weeks, 11 times. And boom, straight, and no cancer. And got a whole new voice box. Cancer had eaten away her whole voice box. You got to be unashamed. And you can't, I use the word holy hoot. Give, don't give a holy hoot what people think. I love you, sir, but I don't give a holy hoot what you're thinking. The day you come here to please people, you're, you're, you've lost. You've completely lost it. This is wonderful. Do we want to stand up straight tonight? Mm -hmm. Do we want to stand up straight tonight? Yes. You're sure? <laughs> yes. You didn't mention that in your list. I don't know. Yeah, well, yes, I do. <laughs> I, that's kind of a given. <laughs> What's that? It's kind of a given. I do, you, you know. Standing was a given. <laughs> yes. You want to stand up? See, that's the danger. It becomes invisible. Stay out of that. It's a given. Name it. Name it. Name it. Put his name against that name. Put his name against that name. Name. The yoke don't always break with the first. Yeah, the anointing breaks the yoke, but not always the first hit. 
It's not the sudden splash, it's that constant drop that breaks the rock. Come on, say the constant drop. Come on, say the steady pressure. Come on, say the steady pressure of the anointing will break anything. It's the steady, it's the constant prayer. It's taking that communion when you don't feel like it. Yeah, it's easier to watch something on television. Take a break from all of this. I get it. Take a sea law. Take a break. But that, that puts you over in the slow lane. Accelerate this. Keep the pressure on. Ride the wave of momentum after you're here. We, we, want, we want to get you so fired up that your own house don't even recognize you. Amen. When you sit on your favorite chair, your chair says, who are you? Come on, somebody. <laughs> when you climb into your bed, your bed says, you don't belong here. Yeah. Everything around you doesn't recognize you anymore. You say, yeah, but that's radical. That's why we're here. Amen. Is to move you out of anything that's reasonable. Cancer is not reasonable. A lot of the diseases aren't reasonable. They're here to steal your quality of life. And then your goal is, I'm going to live to be 93. But you don't know anybody. You don't even know your children. That's not, that's not living. As my days, so shall. Well, somebody over here knows it. Deuteronomy, write that down. Deuteronomy 33, 25. It's a promise. It's not a suggestion. It's a promise. Come on, say Deuteronomy 33, 25. As my days, so will my strength be. All of my faculties will work. My eyes won't grow dim. And my hearing won't disappear. Eeky, creaky bones won't show up. You may have to pray a little more. You may have to do a little more stuff than you did before. Yes, I'm fine. I want my husband to turn him over his shoulder. But you can't be afraid of old age, and yet you don't want to die. So if you're going to be here as you get older, the next best thing is older and well. Well, how do you die if you're well? Well, there's a question. How do you die if you're well? My God, who wants to talk about dying? I come here for a healing service. <laughs> Settle your issues. Remove anything that can make you afraid. Clear the path. I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Wow. So simple and so powerful. Make sure your life is in the hands of the living God. Amen. Not in circumstance. Because we get hit. We get sick. We have accidents. We have surgeries. That's life. But you go through things with the name and with your faith. Because the moment that needle hits you and you're out, which I had that in 2004, was my last stage of my fight with cancer in 2004. I had to go in and get quick and removed all my lymph nodes on this side because it had spread through my lymph nodes. They said it's probably in your bloodstream. We don't know where. So under surgery, they put their hand in through my chest all the way, all the way over. The surgeon had his hands in here because when I woke up, I thought, I'm so sore. He said, my hands were the whole way in your body feeling your lymph nodes. And he said, I couldn't find any hard ones. I says, because God made him soft. <laughs> he said, whatever. Whatever. You have to be your own spin doctor. Because if all you're going to do is be another person that stands in line and accepts what everybody says, then you're going to go what the doctor says on your health. You're going to go by Bo Derrick's calendar of 1 to 10. Remember Bo Derrick? How many remember Bo Derrick? That's sad you even remember her. <laughs> I think every woman remembers Bo Derrick. Because they're graded on a scale of 1 to 10. Hey, what's your new girlfriend like? Eh, she's a 6. 
What's that new man you have? He's a 10 plus. Come on, somebody. That's a terrible way to live. And it's not even true. Unless you're just going by the outer and nothing, nothing inside. Where's your values? So we go by this, her, and we go by the, what the doctor says. We go by... Then we go by the scale of not bad for 60. How are you doing? Not bad for 60. I didn't ask you that. Say, I'm strong in the Lord. Amen. I'm going from glory to glory. Amen. I've been healed so much in the past, and he's working on a few things right now. Yeah. Come on, say, I plan to be whole. I've been forgiven. Amen. That bad memories are out of me. Amen. I have a new purpose in life. I'm living in the now moment. I'm not stuck in yesterday. Come on, give God a big shout here tonight. Come on. Come on. Come on, you got to. Boy, you're making me preach. All these people up here tonight are making me preach. These, these mini messages. I'm going to touch you here, man. What's your name again? Sharon. Sharon. Can I get out of the way, guys? Get out of the way. You ready? Guys, ready? Here we go. I'm going to touch you. I'm going to pray that these bones, oh, they're going to move again. They moved last night. They're going to, no. huh? I know. <laughs> You're not telling me nothing. I don't know. Those bones, you felt the bones moving. Oh, yeah. She felt the bones move. It's the only reason she's here. No, it's not. My husband wouldn't. <laughs> your, your husband? I, had to, I would have never heard the end of it. I wanted to come anyway. Your husband, what, what, you, you would make her come? No, I... I yes, he would. He what? He what? He wanted me to come, and I would do it for him alone if I didn't do it for myself. You would do it alone for him. Right. But we have some great couples here tonight, Amen. I'll tell you that. Amen. This guy, he's just a nice boy. That by the Holy Ghost. Wow. Got to get him out of the way first, huh? <laughs> <laughs> He was getting in the road. He was sending her signals. I didn't like him. Come on. If he doesn't have his shoulder. <laughs> Got to get a break from over there. <laughs> He's all I need. Come on, sing it, Bruce. He's all, all I need. Jesus. He's all I need. Jesus. Holy Ghost, that mighty power. Come on, Jesus, on her side, guys. Jesus Let her sit there. Ah. Come on, He answers prayer. He answers prayer. Come on, say, Jesus. Jesus. He answers Pick her up, guys. Pick her up. Okay, we're gonna pick when you pick her up, I want you to hold her here for me. One, two, and three. Okay, here we go with those hands, what we did last night. Remember? Here we go again. Okay. Come on. When I count to three, I want you to put those hands as high as you can. High as you can. Okay? okay? You okay? Yeah. You all right? Ready? Mm -hmm. I'm going to count to three, and we're going to ask those bones to move yet again. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Holy Ghost! Bend back a little bit. Bend up and back. Come on, back. Come on. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing amazing. He's all I need. Jesus is all. Come on, every voice. He's all that I need. He is all I need. I'm going to get her a chair. Get her a chair. 
Come on, Jesus. Jesus Go ahead, have a seat. Get those hands up. Come on. There we go. Oh, there we go. Back. Look at that. Look at that. Bend it back. Bend it back. Bend it back. Bend it back. Back a little more. Bend it back. Wow. Where'd the husband go? I can see your interest up here, sir. Come on. <laughs> Like you wanted me out of the way. <laughs> do you see this, sir, about your wife, though? Do you see what she's able to do? She's, those bones are straightening out. That's how those bones will move the more you push the boundaries. You have to push the boundary of indifference in anything. Amen. If I can't get you involved, I prayed for a guy in First Presby. He was in the wheelchair 20 years. Hadn't walked in 20 years. So I put my hand on the handles of the wheelchair, and I said, come on, tonight you walk. He said, no, no, don't embarrass me. I said, pardon me? He said, I didn't come for the walk. I came for prayer. <laughs> Boy, that set me in a real tizzy. I didn't know. Well, you came for prayer. Okay, prayer leads you to walk, but not for a lot of people. Wow. Not for a lot of people. For a lot of people, prayer don't lead to their miracle. Wow. Prayer is a stall tactic from having people have to take a step and do something they don't want to do. I said, no, no, sir. I said, tonight we really, we, I want you to walk. He said, you're embarrassing me. And that night at First Presby, we had the whole downstairs field, people in the balcony. And I thought, well, what a night in this historic church to see this miracle. So I went in one more time and I said, listen, I said, I don't want you to embarrass you. I said, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to touch you and I want you to stand. He said, Billy, I can't stand. I said, no, that's before you came in here. Amen. See, he's coming to church like a lot of, no expectation. Why do you walk into a meeting, especially one like this? We should have a warning sign out there. <laughs> Come on, say, no lifeguard on duty. Come on. <laughs> Amen. So I said, Come on, let's go. I went, one, two, three. And boy, he stood right up. And his legs were shaking like this because his muscles had, you can imagine 20 years. He was just shaking like that. And he's, look at me. I said, look, yeah, that's amazing. I said, could you do this? He said, no. I said, what do you want to do? He said, I don't know. I said, well, tell me what you want to do. And people, people were going crazy. They knew about his miracle before he did. They knew. The people in those seats knew. When he stood that he couldn't do that. And they were like, yes. And he's thinking, what's going on? A miracle, sir. There's a miracle in motion. Hey, earth to this man, there's a miracle in motion. He said, I said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to walk. I said, well, there's the whole front of the church. So here's what he did. He, he started to walk. He, he's shaking like crazy. And he looked out at everybody in that church. He said, I don't believe any of this. As he's walking, he said, I, I don't believe this. And then he said, this can't be happening. I, I don't believe this. I don't believe this. He wasn't comfortable until he got back and climbed back into that chair. I said, what just happened there? He said, I'm not sure. He, put, he couldn't say it. His mouth wouldn't let him. His brain waves didn't compute. That's, how, that's why the Bible calls it a stronghold. That's why it's called a stronghold. That's what the great apostle said. We got these strongholds. But you can't get past what you're thinking. Well, my Bible says there is an anointing that will break every and any yoke. Yeah. And a racial yoke, a marriage yoke. Uh, not expecting money yoke. The Bible's full of them. And we're full of stuff. And we live our whole life and we've never taken the limits off of God. We go back to our credit score. How come you don't got a car? My credit score. What? What? Don't have any down payment. 
Well, have you talked to God? Well, what's he going to do? <laughs> we have a wrong understanding. God speaks to people to help other people. He'll speak to a loan institution. He'll speak to your banker. And for no unknown reason, your bank will say, ah, we're going to give you this. You just never know. You're dealing with a God who does the impossible. Amen. How you feeling, ma'am? Good. What do you mean good? Good, good. Because <laughs> I know I'm going to get better. What's that? I know I'm going to get better. She knows yeah. she's going to get better. I got every reason to feel good. What's that? I, got it. I have every reason to feel good. Every reason. I love that attitude. I'm going to keep it. What's that? I'm going to keep You're it. You're going to keep the attitude. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to do what? Make sure of that. Oh, did you hear what he said? <laughs> He's going to make sure. Raise your right hand. I now deputize you to keep her. <laughs> Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. Woo! See, the instant miracles are great. We love those. This is good for you, too. It's good for you to see this. Because Luke 18 says, "What well, though I tarry long with you, when I do come, I'll deliver you speedily, if I find faith on earth. So God knows that sometimes it's easier to get healed instantly than to walk through something. Why do we have to walk through something? Because we identify with him. He didn't die right away. He suffered long. That's why they crucified people. They suffered long. That's why they broke their legs, so they couldn't push themselves up to breathe. But by the time they got to him, there was nothing broken. Amen. He gave up the ghost. He gave it up. Amazing. This Jesus is amazing. Come on, give me another testimony. Somebody else last night. Yes, right here. Come to me. Keep her there. Keep her there. She's good right there. What happened, ma'am? Um, so Boy, the we... power's all over you. <laughs> Holy <laughs> ghost. Lady. Thank get you, her, guys. Jesus. Get her. Get her. Just get her. It's all over that woman. So um, when we were Ooh. here last month, yes. um, you From put hands on my daughter, Megan, the cute little redhead, and you had said that he's doing it. And you had said, she's going to shake you. And then you walked away and you said, and her hand is going to be uncuffed. And so um, I hold those things in my heart and it comes out of my mouth. And I remind Megan of that every evening for this new day, new day of victory, a new day of wonderful mother. Wow. So anyway, what I realized is over this last month from August to now, she had only one seizure in four weeks. Amen. How many do you normally have? She had normally in the past had a seizure at least a, uh, once a week, and it would affect her for 24 hours. And the yoke is broke. Oh! Come on, somebody. The yoke is, and in the midst of I all of this. I love the mother, the way she's doing this. In the midst of all of this, um, peace. Oh, boy. Greater peace. There's this joy in my sweet um, personality daughter. She's just smiling. She's just smiling with such peace. God's doing it. He's doing it. And one more thing. Back in April, you had called me out of the crowd, and you kind of smacked my face. Really? But it was the best thing ever. <laughs> Must have been an angel. Had to be an angel. <laughs> and um, I went down with such um, uh, the power of God, and you said, Purging is happening, and I'm thinking to myself, Now pay attention purging. to that. Wait a minute. Pay attention to the, she went down with the power. Because if you're shallow, you think, well, boy, he must have hit her really hard. Sometimes, sometimes, I don't understand that. I'm a little more forceful with people. I don't know why. I don't try to be. 
If you come up here and you tell me not to touch you, I, I won't touch you. I, I'm, I'm not here to hit anybody hard, but the point isn't that. The point is on the way down. She felt the power. Do you hear me, what I'm saying to you? It's amazing. It's a great story. I love it. So I'm, I'm laying on the floor, and from deep within, I'm like sobbing. And I'm inquiring of the Lord this mm -hmm. time. It was like this lifetime of trauma and distress wow. and heartache. He just moved it out. And I have more strength and ability to um, put the pressure on the yoke. Oh! I'm not weary. You're not timid and bashful and shy about this. You're not helpless and hopeless. I'm not. You're moving in faith. I am. And it's being transferred to your daughter. Amen. Somebody, real, watch, real easy, real easy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give God a shout. Yeah. Amazing. One more testimony. We have one more good testimony. Where, 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 somebody? Where? Way over here. Yes. Can you come to me? Yes. Oh. Today's my miracle day. Today's your miracle day. In, in 2019, I, you laid hands on me. And my memory started coming back from brain damage. Your memory. It's been four, four and a half years. My memory's better now than it's ever been in my life. I give God the glory. I give God the glory. Yeah, amen. Today, I've been dealing with alcoholism with my husband. Today what? No. I've been dealing with alcoholism for 12 years with mm -hmm. my husband. Mm -hmm. Pastor Richard Roberts sent me oil. Mm -hmm. For my miracle okay. for, today. for today. I just got that yesterday in the mail. Okay. I know Richard, huh? Yes. Good man. I want you to lay hands on me and believe that I'm healed. Well, this is Richard's picture, not mine, though. I know. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit's doing it. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll agree with Richard right here. <laughs> oh, I know it. You don't have to say it to everybody. I know it. I have this. I have this for Sharon. Yes, for who? For Sharon. That's for Sharon. The lady over there. Sharon. The, la the lady that was stood. Oh, well, you go give it to her. You go okay. give it to her. I wanted to give this to her because it says. Okay. With God, all things go are possible. Go give it to her. Go give it to Sharon. Go ahead. Go ahead. All things are possible. All things are possible. I was healed from brain damage. For 12, 13 years, wow. I fought the government for, for benefits, for disability. Wow. I finally got my disability, and now I had money for a car. Wow. I'm driving a car. I just got a car on Saturday. Wow. And it's a good car. It's an older car. It's a good one. It's a big one. A changing one. Redeemed through. It's a good idea. <laughs> I've seen the lily push its way up through. Come on, I believe. I So now, so then tell me this, so you, you, the, the memories all, all the way back? That's amazing. I can't remember songs from the 60s now. Oh, like what? Like well, name one. Um, like Elton John, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. I know all the words. Goodbye right Yellow now. Brick Road. You know all the words to that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have a problem though. Okay. My problem is I'm addicted to marijuana and I went off of it. And that's an addiction. It's not legal. It never should be. And I went off of that stuff. I don't want it anymore. Everybody in my family smokes Amen. marijuana. Amen. And I don't want it anymore. They force it on me. I can roll. They want me to roll their joints and their, their blunts and all that stuff. I can't do it no more. I'm done. 
I'm finished. I want that oil on me because I'm a miracle in action from today. I'm not smoking another thing. I love it. I love it. I'm not this is revival right here. This is revival right there. You better stand to your feet. Give God praise. To God be the glory. Come on. let me my hands up come on Amazing. Amazing. My life. My life is his. Amen. We break the power of sorcery over you. Amen. That's what drugs comes from. It's from the word pharmaceuta, yes. which means sorcery. That's right. That's where the word pharmacy comes from, sorcery. Same Greek words. It says, and the Antichrist will use the forces. Yeah. And he will use for sorcery, the drugs. That's what this culture is. It's being prepared for that that leader, that evil one, that'll be revealed as the restraining force is lifted gradually. I'd say the restraining force is halfway up. And the more the restraining force is lifted, the more lawlessness takes place in this land. Get ready, he's coming for the church. Amen. I said he's coming for the church. And he's coming for me. I don't know what song that is. The king, the king is, coming. is coming. I just heard, I just heard the, trumpet the trumpet sounding and his voice. And sound his face. The king, oh, the king is coming. Woo! The king is coming. Is coming. Here's the part. She'll never touch another marijuana joint in her whole life. Amen. Wow. Make sure, Jim, make sure she gets that. Beautiful. I love it. You carry stuff from ministries that, that believe in miracles. I love it. Wow. wow. Did we do the offering yet? No. Oh. You want me to do one? Yes. Only because you ask, I'll do this. Put your hands up all over. Come on. Obviously, the ministry like this, we need people like you to believe in it enough to share your resources. We don't look to any one person. We want God to move on you. We want it to be moved by your heart string. Not just your head string. Not the fact that you're just going to get more. That's the head string. It makes sense to give when you think about it. But no, I'm not after that these testimonies, these people that are responding. You lose track of them over the years. We have a warehouse full. We have a warehouse in Tampa filled with these stories that we're going to soon put on television. It'll be called, it'll be called, you ready for this? The Healing Signal. 
And we're going to send this around the earth. And a lot of these come right out of Pittsburgh. Done at First Presby. Right here. So here's all these miracles we're seeing here. A lot of them. You may be on TV. You may be discovered. You never know. Make sure you send in your tithe here as you get discovered, okay? Come on, put your money up over your head. Come on, let's, let's pray. Say, Holy Ghost, I got to give tonight. I got to support the work of God. I pay taxes for bridges and roads and who knows what. But I pay my tithes and my offering for the supernatural move of God in the earth today. And that revival would fall in my church, in my family, in my own house, something would begin to catch fire that'll never change, that'll never go down. I thank you, Lord, for the fire of the Holy Ghost, for the passion of God, that I serve Him with every part of me. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The rushers are up here with their baskets. Yes? We, and this way, what now? We're going to go that way. Oh, okay, just a minute. But I want you to make your checks out to the World Outreach if you're making a check out. Or if you're giving, I want this TV evangelist right here to get. And if you're giving cash or credit card, make sure you put it in here, okay? Put your name on it. We have almost 500 people watching online right now. Come on, give God shout over 500. Yeah. You know, I'm asking you online as well. Just because you're online don't mean you can't give into this work tonight. If you believe in miracles, if you're expecting one for yourself, if you're a Pittsburgher, if you're a native of this city, this tri-state area, help support what God is doing here. He's doing it through multiple churches. This is not the only show in town. There's other great churches here that have been here for years, labored hard. And God's blessing churches and prayer groups. He's blessing the aglow and full gospel. He's moving all over this area. God has invested in the tri-state area. He's redigging the wells of yesterday. Come and be a part of this. It's right on your screen. Go to the website, billyburke.org, or right there and push the donate button and send in your offering. Help me help people in this hour. God bless you. Go ahead, everybody. Let's do this offering, and then we're going to come up. Stand to your feet. Put your gift up over your head. Come on, say, my days of lack and not enough are over. As I sow this seed... I'm believing for an increase like I've never seen. For God to move on my finances. For me to get out of the burden of debt. The yoke of debt. That yoke has got to break too. To free my time. And to free my mind. To free my energy. To serve the master. I gave him all the praise. In Jesus name. Come on up, everybody. Bring your gift up here. You do.
there's no one. There is no one else like you. There's no one. There is no one else like you. Oh, there is no I'm going to pray for those of you that gave in the offering tonight. I'm going to pray for you. It's important. You did. You responded. I, made, I put a, an appeal out and you answered that appeal. I'm sure that's money you could use. I'm sure it's money that you need. But I'm, I'm promising you on the authority of God's word, not because I said so. You did what God has asked you to do. Come on, say, I did it. I, did it. I, sowed, a I sowed a seed. That seed is in the ground. It's not even in the bank yet, but it's in the ground of the kingdom. It's working for me right now. And it's coming back in a greater measure. It's going to do amazing things because I gave with sacrifice. I gave with faith. I gave in the spirit of love. And I thank God right now. He's going to take care of me. He's going to provide for me. I don't have to be afraid of all the coming reports. No money. No jobs. More layoffs. Another virus. More vaccines. They don't apply to me. I have a source. My God shall supply. Not some of my need, but all of my need, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19, in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a big, big shout. Come on. Come on, give it to him. Oh, my God. Someone's been having pain in your shoulders. Who is this? But a lot of pain across your shoulder blades. Who is this? You've been having these kinds of pains. Come to me, guy from New Jersey. Come on, hurry up. What's been happening here? I uh, need surgery in my shoulder, and uh, my church has been praying for me for a while now. And uh, well, You're going home healed. You're going home healed. By the Holy Ghost, you're going home healed. And then you get answered prayer. I got a word, I got a word, I got a word, I got a fulfilled word. Quit getting so happy because you got a word or you got a prayer. Your goal, your faith is after the answer. Say, I got to have a manifestation. Say it. Sometimes you got to remind the preacher. He's the key. He's trying to keep you in faith, and you're trying to get to the prize. I'm more about getting to the prize. Don't worry about staying in faith as long as you stay to the prize. That grandson, that husband, come on, say that church person, that BFF, that best friend. Keep your eyes on the prize. That you want to show up at your church, no more limp. You're just going to be walking. Your Chester days are over. Come on, somebody. You're, you're just going to walk tall and straight. It's a shame that many people know who I'm talking about. That's a shame. What's going on here, sir? I, my uh, neck. The, the He's removing floaters from the eyes. Floaters yes. from the eyes. Spots on the eyes. He's removing floaters. Uh, by the Holy Ghost. L4 and L5 is being healed right now. L4 and L5. It's There's a diverticulitis being healed right now. Quickly, come, quickly. Quickly. There's, a, there's some kind of a uh, herniated disc being wonderfully healed. Herni disc herniation. Come on, get out of your seats. Stand in this line right here beside this, this man right here. So what's going on here, sir? Okay, I, we were in an accident, my, uh, my wife and I, uh, last September. Yeah, yeah. She was in... Uh, one of the results of the accident is the uh, first couple vertebrae in the neck okay. are deteriorating. 
and I, I Is it hurt? Thought, yes. Does it hurt now? Oh, yes. We'll check it. I did. We'll check it again. Just a little bit. Yep. <laughs> yep, what? It's gone. It's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ah, the Holy Ghost on that man. Come on, give him. <laughs> Where's his wife at? That's you. You got this family special here. Yes, we do. How's, how are you feeling right now? Well, I'm feeling a lot better after I was slain. I was really, really, really hot. And I have to tell you, Pastor, the Holy Spirit told me to come tonight because you were like the priest that heals leopards. Oh, my. He told you that. Yep. He See, told I'm gonna, me that. See, I'm going I'm to log that. Yep. I mean, if I don't like it, I'm not going to receive it. I like that. Why wouldn't I receive that? And the doctor told me to go to the emergency room today. And I said, nope, I'm coming to see Pastor Billy. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pray for this ministry, Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pray for me. I, I, if you have an empty spot on your prayer list. Mm. And we're, we're facing some rough issues here. We need to get a bigger place. We need to get our own place. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of paying all these people money. Mm. I feel like I own these hotels. <laughs> but I don't. Station Square ra raised their price from 2500 to 5000 For us. Because we don't buy the alcohol. We just bring people. The other place over here didn't like us because of what we were doing. What we were doing could have taken them to court. Could have went to court if I wanted to with them under the First Amendment. But I was having a real graceful day. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of some of the speed bumps. That's why they're speed bumps. But when you see this, it's worth everything. Bring this guy up from the New Jersey. Can you guys help me with the New Jersey guy? What's your name, sir? John. Come on, Chuck. Wow. Check it, Chuck. <laughs> I feel good. I feel good. Chuck, tell me. What, what Chuck? What? <laughs> can you talk? Yeah, I can. I just thank Jesus for everything in my life. I had a rough life, you know, but <clears throat> he made me stronger and a better person, you know what I mean? And <clears throat> I just praise Jesus and I try to praise him as much as I can, you know. Sometimes it's hard, but I still praise him and I love him as much as anybody else does. Tell me about your back, your neck, your shoulder. My shoulder feels excellent. Beautiful. Beautiful. I feel like I'm a lot straighter, too. You know what I mean? Feels like I grew a couple more inches. He's all I need. And he's all. Say that amazing word, Jesus. He's all. He's all he is all uh, and he's all he's all help him up carefully Jesus Jesus he's all he's all I wow wow <laughs> oh, it's great it's great it's moving with that hurting there's no pain going up it was pressing, they were pressing together, wow. the two. And so it was going up into the head. Wow. And it, it was all the time. It, it, all the time. Yeah, yeah. So, it, oh, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Hearing? I think you're going to get some more, what about, what's this? How about his hearing? We just, we had to buy new hearing aids. See, these wives will tell everything. <laughs> 
either leave them at home or leave them in the seat. Because if they get up here, they're going to tell everything. Do you hear me? That's what these wives do. They're detailed people. They want their man well. So those ears have to hear, take out the garbage. They have to hear that. <laughs> Clean out the cat litter. They got to hear that. No more selective hearing. No more, oh, selective hearing. <laughs> Boy, that is a powerful word. I'll remember that. <laughs> no, I have Select a wonderful practice. husband. So how, how bad, how, how's your ears? What's the deal? I'm what? You have hearing aids in? Oh, you? Yes, I do. Okay, I didn't even see them. Well, go ahead. They're way in. Oh, wow. There you go. How much do you pay for those? 3000 3000 for both? Now I can't hear. Now you can't hear? Well, I can make out what you're saying because we're talking. But it's real muffled. I, uh, I did have a service. This is a true story where this guy was like this. He couldn't hear. So when his ears came open, he could hear everything that I said. I said, but I don't live with you, so I brought his wife up. He couldn't hear anything his wife said. <laughs> See, it's true. It's a true story. And we tried it and tried it and tried it, and he couldn't hear anything that she was saying. It wasn't because it was a softer voice. He had a block. He just couldn't hear his wife. Yeah. What's that? Didn't want to. You guys actually match tonight. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. Did you try to do that? No, we didn't coordinate it. We just happened to... And where do you live? Where you both? Dressed in the stairs. You live on Mount Washington. That's yeah. beautiful. Way up yeah. on top. Yeah, but you not where the view is. But we can walk to it. You can walk to it. Yep. Yeah. You like walking to it? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Uh, yeah. Who's your favorite favorite Bible character? Oh, there's so many. Uh, Just name one. <laughs> uh, the one with the. Uh, uh, like soaring eagles. Uh, soaring eagles? Oh, yeah. Song. Yeah. <clears throat> Get the strength of. Uh, oh, your Bible verse. Okay, the, the soaring Bible. eagles. Okay. I, that's what you asked. They that wait upon the Lord renew your strength like right. that of the eagle. Right, right. Yeah, wonderful. Right. Where's the favorite place you ever went on vacation? Alaska. Love the beautiful, beautiful state. He's hearing without any. I know he is. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have to really concentrate because it, 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 it echoes in the head. Okay. Is it echoing now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's a shame that the, the music's good, but it's echoing so much I couldn't make out what, the, 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 what they were singing. Okay. Uh, other than the fact that the songs they were singing I've heard on the radio with my wife. Hmm. So it's, it, it's, really, it's really hard when you, when you can't hear. Anyone that has a problem with hearing, uh, you know, it, it, you know it's, it's hard. How about if we take care of that? I didn't hear okay. <laughs> Everybody put their hands up quickly, quickly. We give you such praise. We, oh, the power here. Oh, the power. He's going, oh, he, he, he don't know which way to fall. Oh, be loosened, the deaf and the dumb. Be loosened from this. Wow. The mighty Holy Ghost on this cup. Boy. We might just spend the whole night with these two, I'll tell you that. Precious couple right here. Precious. Pittsburgh people, Mount Washington. They love God. They come to these meetings. They testify. God's going to keep them. He's going to preserve them. This man's going to hear better than he's ever heard. There'll be no echo. Amen. Somebody shout, no echo. no echo. Wow. What's going on here, sir? Come on. Don't bring them up yet. Don't bring them up yet, especially him. Yes, 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 yes. You have a floater in the left eye? Macular edema is what the doctor said. And I have a sore back. How, how's your, how, why is your back sore? Because I, when I had COVID, I fell against the bed, uh, an iron bed and hurt my back. Before we leave tonight, this is September, we're going to have everybody up here, and we're going to break every curse of any COVID that's even going to come near your house. 
You hear me? Tonight. Tonight. It's going to be a special prayer for COVID, not even coming. Just going to come to your house and say, they can't go there. Just like on Passover, the blood was there. They just had to pass on by. Come on, say, COVID. COVID. Time to pass on by. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let's get this floater out of here. By the Holy Ghost, we give you, oh, Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Spirit, man. He's increasing the fluid in your eye. Floaters come and go to a lot of people, but their eyes are dry. And the fluid in your eyes are going to increase. They're going to wash this floater away and any coming floater. You'll never be blind. You'll never be macular. Your rods and cones will always be balanced all the days of your life. Your husband loved you. And you've loved your husband. We loved him. He's rejoicing this day as you continue the journey. Now that day is coming when you will see him yet again. And he, you, in a much more glorified form. Marvin and you will be seeing each other quite often in the future. Oh, there's the power. Wow. Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. Bread of heaven, feed me till I I want no more. Fill my cup, I lift it up. And make me You know, Marvin, Marvin was her husband, and he would watch after my wife, Melanie, back here. He loved Melanie so much, and Melanie him. And it became where he would watch when we would commit on the monthly meeting. He would watch for her to make sure that she was in the right seat and everything was taken care of. Such a gentleman, this man that she was married to. How you feeling there, sir? How do you feel? Overwhelmed. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? Tell me. Oh, I'm, everything is uh, loose up in the head. The rest of the body is... <laughs> shaking <laughs> it's just an enormous feeling how's the hearing here haven't had yes you can hear better a little better yes no echo yeah the echo's still there a bit like you're further away now and not a, i would not have heard you had oh before because i'm this far away yeah so if i'm this far away i can hear you say hello yeah i love the lord hello. love the lord thank you jesus i can thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I got a healing. I got a healing. Somebody give God a shout. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Because it definitely didn't have a, a closeness at all. I mean, not with the, you know, uh, and it's, it's like somebody's holding their fingers in your ear and you can't hear. When, and that's when, gone. And it's gone, yeah. You okay? You all right? My, my hips need to be strengthened. I'm sorry? My hips need to be strengthened. How's the eye? I can see more of you than I could a while ago. You see more of me. That's dangerous right there. <laughs> Look at that smile. Boy, you got a smile. Yeah. We love you. You know that. Thank you. We love you, too. We love you. We love Marvin. I miss him. I know you do. But he's still alive. Yes, he is. His body's in the ground, but he is alive. Amen. He is. His he's spirit's alive. up there. He's there. He beat you to it. He did. That wasn't fair. That wasn't fair. No. <laughs> How do you feel right now? You need strength, you said? In my hips. I have I have a replacement here, and this one's nailed together because I broke it. Nailed the, together? What do you mean nailed together? Well, because I fell on the tile floor and it broke, so they. Well, keep, What's that? What's happening? It's the power. You're under the power. You're fighting under the power. 
You're fighting from falling under the power again. Let me help you with that. <laughs> Dear Lord. She's there trying to fight from falling under the power. Why would you do that? Come on, hurry up, sir. We got work to do here quickly. What's going on here? My shoulder, I can't lift it up farther now without a lot of pain. Could be coming from my neck. I don't know. Well, just let's just Holy Ghost. <coughs> Follow me, Holy Ghost. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Look at you. You can't do what? <laughs> what can't you do? Lift my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Just drop your down. Now let's just go. Come on, just go. Wow. Come on, somebody. What do you think of that? We can't have your wife getting all the miracles. No, we can't. That's for sure. Give this man a big God bless you. Come on. Yes. Yes. L5. How long has it been like that? Oh, well, I've had spinal issues for many years. God has brought it me hurting through now? a lot of it. And the Is it hurting now? Um, somewhat. Somewhat. Well, I can go to the side much better than I did. Because you're healed. Oh, that's wonderful. One more thing, Pastor. Oh, oh, thank you, Lord. One more thing. Last month, you called out a word of knowledge about losing a sense of smell from COVID. Yes. That was me. Oh. And I, in the last couple weeks, I have been able to smell basil, wait, wait, basil from my garden and a fire from a fire pit that I didn't even know was lit. However... It's not Everybody consistent. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Come on, who Jesus is. Come on, everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Who Jesus is. Come on, he's the lily. morning he's the bright and morning star he's the fairest he's the, the fairest of ten thousand everybody ought to know I woke up this morning thing and I've got a home in glory land that out shines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Way beyond the blue. I took Jesus as my Savior. I took Jesus as my Savior. You take him too. Come on, everybody. I took Jesus as my Savior. You take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him to way beyond the blue. I just thought I'd share that with you tonight. That song going to make you happy. The way, the way the song goes is, do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Uh, do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Way beyond the blue. So I sing it a little different. I sing, Lord, I know you remember me. It takes a little longer to sing it, but... Because I don't want to act like you don't remember me. You have to change some of those songs because they're not right. They're not full of faith. Yes. Uh, my hip. You're telling me I need a hip replacement and I don't want to have surgery and I want God to be my healer again. Well, you, have a, you have something flowing for you that's wonderful and that is the, the miracle in your daughter. Absolutely. And your friend here. That, that's your my friend? Boyfriend? No, his friend. Uh, okay, you're a friend. <laughs> Don't cross no lines. You're the friend, all right? 
If you have a history, you have history. And I thank the Lord for that because I know he did it. Your faith, your faith has really been a catalyst for your daughter. Absolutely. You, put, you kept that in front of her, keeping her reminding of that. That hole is closed. That hole is closed. One thing, too, that I didn't say that when the, um, the doctor um, heard her heart and could not find a heart murmur, she did it like three times. The pain in your heart's connected to your hip. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. He's going to heal your inside tonight. Mm. You've carried this for a lot of years. Oh, yes. No one's ever listened to you. <laughs> But God did. No one has ever listened to you. You haven't had that shoulder. At the Last Supper, the night before Jesus died, the beloved John rested his shoulder, his head on the bosom of the Master. Thank you. He was saying, I just don't know what's going on here. I feel the change is coming, but I trust you. Come on, put your hands up. Change is coming, but you got to trust him. Change is coming. It's coming to America. It's coming to churches. It's coming everywhere. Yes, there's going to be a shoe drop. Yes. But right behind that shoe is going to be a revival like you have never, ever seen in your life. You've got to really lay everything at the foot of the cross. I like that. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for all of us. Just to remind us of where our strength comes from. Our strength comes from a, a guy who looked weak. He had no muscles. He wasn't handsome. The Bible says there was nothing comely about him. He wasn't in a GQ magazine. He didn't dress cool. He had a seamless robe that was given to him, worth thousands of dollars on the market at that time. But he would walk into this room. You wouldn't even recognize him outside of the glory that surrounded him. Yes, there's room yes. at the cross for Come on, sing it with me. There's room. There's room at the cross He's healing you. He's healing your inside. The pain you've carried. The words that have gone down inside of you. He's breaking that. You're going to like you. You're going to forgive all those people who tongue last you, who planted those bad seeds. They're being broken tonight. And millions of room for one. Yes. Yes, there's room at the cross. At the cross for you. As you're laying there, I want you to really, I want you to just by your will, See, if you can be healed by faith, you can forgive by faith. Don't wait till you feel it. Don't wait till you think they deserve it. That's not Jesus' kind of forgiveness. He forgave while they were laying there watching him while he was hanging on the cross. Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. Some of the people that have devastated your life don't even have a clue of the lasting impact. How it's gone beyond you and it's affected your children. It's affected your career. It's affected your Christianity. This is poison. It's the worst. That's why the highest, the highest law of God in the scripture that trumps every other law is the law of forgiveness. There's nothing greater in the scriptures. And it's still the number one thing that we struggle with. Forgiving ourselves, forgiving people. And that's why you got to say, Lord, I got to do it by faith. Because I don't feel like forgiving you by faith I forgive him by faith and leave it you said the right word you believed it that did the job it keeps the devils off of your front doorstep did you notice this have you been noticing her leg here her leg went straight what's the matter with this crowd I'll tell you what I got to bring my own salt and pepper here or something. I, something matter with this soup. Who's with her? The, the, the daughter? Come here, daughter. Come here. I forget your name. I'm sorry. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Come on. Look at your mother's leg. went straight. The right leg. It was bent because it was in such pain. What's your mom's name? Doreen. 
Doreen? Yes. Wow. <sighs> holy. Holy, holy, holy. we lift our hearts as we lift our hearts before you as a token of our love. Holy, 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 holy. He's moving all through you, man. He's moving all through your body. I tell you, the Holy Spirit has arrested you tonight. He's taken time to put a tap in you and remove the poison. You have not even been who you really are. You don't even know who you really are. Those words that have gone, the Bible says the words go down into your belly and make war. That's what it says when people speak wrong things. That's what the Bible says. I don't know if you believe the Bible. How many believe the Bible? They go down into your belly and they make war. A lot of the disease that comes from this part of your body had been put there by words. You got to flush them out. You got to get them out of your head. My dad said to me, mom used to say to me, you got to say, I forgive them and get those words, uproot everything. Beautiful. You got to uproot stuff. She's out. This lady's out. Your mother. Look at this. You ever see your mother like that before? No. Never. Did you ever see her that quiet? No. Okay. <laughs> God knows what to do when he brings you here. She's like on the operating table. That's what's happening to her. I was uh, knocked out when they uh, couldn't find the hole. I was 14. Um, but <laughs> I shut my eyes and I saw heaven. You saw heaven. Yes. And I saw Jesus, and Jesus put me on his lap and told me, come go back to earth and tell everybody what, what he did. Wow. Let me come over here a minute and talk to you. I was 14. How old are you now? 20. 20, yes. So did you feel yourself rising up? or mm -hmm. What did that look like? Like, it was beautiful. Did you look down? No. <laughs> you, looked, you went up? Yes. You remember anything about heaven besides Jesus? Anything? Mm -hmm. That's good. As we glory in your prayer now fills this place. Come on. Let's sing it, oh the glory, come on. Oh the glory of his presence. Of your presence. We your temple. We on Doreen right is it Doreen come on oh she's bending her legs dear Lord Doreen just walk Doreen just walk just walk wow let go I can do it oh, oh, that feels great <laughs> A 
I'll send you Bill next week. Okay. <laughs> Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. Wow. Might be those old CMA songs we're singing there. Might be, might be adding a... You, you no pain at all? What's going on? What do you want there? Uh, she, wants cane. she wants her cane. Yes. Tell me, are you any pain there at all? Wow. No pain at all. Wow. Very, very, very little. Hmm. But I couldn't even do this before. I couldn't even do this. Thank you for being a good mom, being a great influence. You're you welcome. have saved this girl all the years of heartache. Thank you, mom. Wow. Give her a big God bless you. Come on. Holy and holy, holy is the Lord. I will praise Him. Oh, the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. Yes, ma'am. You have what? MDS. MBS. What's MBS? MDS. What's that? It's a bone cancer. Bone cancer. Blood. And I was here before. Mm hmm And I don't even know how to say it. You can say it. You said I was healed and I came from the doctors today. Yes. Thinking that I was going to tell you that I was healed. Okay. And he said, I'm just getting worse. Okay. And that scares me. I said, I believe you were healed. And I do believe that. What's, what's wrong? Don't I believe enough? Yes, or? you do. Yeah, you're just going to take a couple trips. That's all. Hold your hands up. I'm glad you're back. What kind of gum are you chewing? It smells good. What kind oh, of gum? No, Andrea, what kind of gum is this? Trident. <laughs> we're not going to shake and waver here. I believe the master touched you. And I believe that bone cancer is going to just... That's what I believe. I want to believe that. Okay, well then just, you know, let me help you. I want you to help okay, me. Okay, then put your hands up. Quit complaining. Put your hands up. <laughs> Come on, see, I receive. I receive. All through my bones. All through my bones. Mm. <laughs> through my bones. My bones. Aim your prayers. Aim your communion. Aim the anointing. I release the anointing into my bones. I take this communion. I drink the juice. Go to my bones. Mm. I worship how great thou art. Go to my bones, song, how great thou art. Go right to my bones. That's the purpose of diagnosis. It creates a target for your faith. You're going to be okay. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. How you doing there, sweetheart? What's happening with you? In the, is he here? They're at home. Is he doing okay? Oh, he's doing great. And you're doing okay? Yeah, I came to bring her today. Okay. Because I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. You're done with this. Yeah, she, she didn't believe. And I'm, I'm like, you, I will bring you, and if, if you're going to hold on to your healing, but you have to hold on to it. She will. She's a good so, lady. Yeah. She's precious. Yep. Got to relate to people. Can't just got to understand where they are. Doing okay? You all right? Yeah. Okay. What? You okay, ma'am? Over here with no more marijuana, right? No more marijuana. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm having a problem with my hips. What's wrong with it? They tell me I have arthritis in both of my they hips. They tell me you have arthritis. But I don't believe it. Well, you, does it hurt when you walk? It does. Well, in my leg. Walk in front of me. Walk. Well, this leg. Walk. Don't talk. Just walk. Okay. Quit talking so much. Just walk. Okay. <laughs> How's that feel? It just hurts a little bit. Just we'll keep walking. How's that feel now? It's getting better. Yeah, sure it is. In Jesus' name. Because your it's faith is growing. It is. And my body's whole in Jesus' name. I'm whole from the top of my head to the soles of my feet in Jesus' name. Just say, I receive. I receive. There you go. That's it. That's all I you need to say is, I receive. I receive. I receive, yes. Quickly, ma'am. What's going on here? I was told I have smoldering myeloma. It's another bone cancer. Unfortunately, it's at this stage, pre-cancer. I get checked again in October, but they said I was high risk. 
and they wanted me to start a toxic medication for now, but I refuse. It's called Revlimid. See, even if you go to a meeting and you don't have to tell anybody what you're facing, what, what this diagnosis is, when you get that prayer, that, your, your aim for that prayer is, Holy Spirit, go to my bones. Go to my cranial. Go to my cortex on my spine, but use what you know about the body to nab. That's why these vitamins you all take, I mean, this is for your adrenal. You swallow a pill, it knows where to go. Your vitamins have eyes on them. C goes here and E goes there and multi goes everywhere. Come on, say amen. Well, if vitamins do that, imagine the anointing. I believe I'm going to be healed. I really do. I feel very strong. No, but I want you to receive it. I receive Believing and receiving are different. I receive a healing. But I knew I had to come see you. I'm I do. Well, I, well, that's good. I knew I had to. I knew it. I don't know. I'm so glad you're here. Where are you from? Washington, Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. You like living there? Yes, it's a nice town. I actually grew up in Beaver, uh, Pennsylvania, but my husband's from Washington, so that's where I am now. Put your hands up, your precious lady. Well, thank you. What yeah. a nice compliment from him. I'm, <laughs> I'm very complimented. I think you're awesome. You're really awesome. God's so good. Mm-hmm. Amen. God's so good. You are. You're awesome. I could say that a hundred times and it wouldn't be enough. I'll do 98 more. Come on, hurry. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You're really cool. No, I'm cool. It's, yeah. <laughs> this is growing, Rick. Leave it alone. It's growing. <laughs> Well, he deserved to be praised, too. Dear Lord. Where'd she come from, this lady? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But God is amazing. He is. I just have to tell you, this lady that I ran into in the restroom, she works for you right here? Yes. I think she's an angel. Which lady is that? Beverly. 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 Yeah, Beverly. she was so sweet to me. She's... Beverly. Yes, yeah, she came in with me and guided me and told me to sit with her. And she, I mean, she just made me feel awesome. So I just have to compliment her too. Your boy, you're just full of compliments tonight. Well, I, I say what I believe. I'm a real truthful person. So what do you believe about the myeloma? I believe I'm going to be healed. I'm no, not going to be. You are. I am healed. I receive it. I receive it. Tonight. Tonight. It's going to change. It's going to change. In my body tonight. In my body tonight. Oh. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. What people are going through today. What people are going through today. Oh, come on. Now. i got to come over here to the sisters. What's happening here with the sisters? Schizophrenia. How long you had schizophrenia? Uh, one year. One year? Okay. Who told you you have schizophrenia? My cousin. Your cousin told you? Uh, What's your cousin do for a living? Nursing. What? Nursing. Nursing. So she told you that? Mm hmm Did you get checked for schizophrenia? Yes. Okay. And they, t and they said what? I have to get medication. We're going to give you some tonight. All right. We're going to medicate you into tomorrow. I'll tell you that right now. And you, sister, are you with her? Yes. What's going on She's with you? She's my cousin. Oh, you're the cousin. You're I'm the one that cousin. told her. Uh, yes. Uh, she was diagnosed by Dr. Gutekunda. Dr. who? Gutekunda. Gutekunda. Okay. In Youngstown. Okay. Uh huh. Yes. She, uh, she probably came down with it in her late teens. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a reason for that. I mean, nobody just gets schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. There's a secretion that comes from the brain if it's put under enough pressure. Mm -hmm. If it's in a, enough adversity. The big one is rejection. Rejection is the most damaging thing that can ever happen. Betrayal, rejection. Put your hands up, sweetheart. I'm gonna, God's going to touch you with re, breaking this rejection over you tonight. And over betrayal. There's going to be a healing power go through your body. And before you ever tell anybody ever again you have schizophrenia, you go get checked up again. Because I don't believe they're going to find anything in your body. That power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Somebody better give him a big 
big shout. Somebody better give him a big hallelujah. Bring everybody else to the front. Bring everybody up to the front. Yes. Okay. 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 I got it. I got it. Shh, I got it. By the Holy Ghost, I got it. We praise you, dear Jesus. We praise you. Oh, there's the power right there. Wow. Wow. Anointing. Oh. Oh, we give you such praise. We give you such praise. We give you such praise. Come on, man. Every hand up in the whole place. Come on, quickly. How Jesus loves. Come on, can we sing that, Bruce? How Jesus What? What it does now? It was. It got healed. Okay. What do you think of that? I think that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. <laughs> I hear restoration all over you. Restoration. Do you hear me, lady? Restoration. Yes. yes. What was supposed to happen and didn't will now. There won't be a door that won't open now. It's going to blow off the hinges. Favor has hit your house now. Come on, somebody better give God a shout. Come on. How Jesus loves and how oh, the power. Melanoma. Melanoma? What stage? Just diagnosed. Just diagnosed. Zero call. I will have no report whatsoever. I believe that. Gone. Microscopic. Gone. Microscopic. Gone. Microscopic. Jesus. Jesus. It's the power, man. It's the power. It's the power. How? Jesus. Oh, the Holy Ghost. Come on, guys, over here. What's going on? What do you guys want tonight? What happened to it? They cloak. They what? They hurt. You feel them? And they hurt. You know, they, they crunch when I move them. Is it crunching now? Yeah. You sure? I'm sure. Do it again. <laughs> what? They hurt. You hear it? How'd you do that? I don't know. They always did it. Since you were a little kid? Yeah, as long as I can remember. And you, who are you? You with him? Yeah, I'm his brother. You're the brother. What's going on with you? Um... I used to have a blood disorder. A what? The first time I came here, I had a blood disorder. You had a blood disorder when you came when? Uh, last last month. Uh huh. I never got checked, but there's no 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 more side effects of it. <laughs> All right. All right. 
And who do you belong to? Is your parents here? My mother is here. Where's your mother? Who's the mother of these Mom, trophies? Where's the, who's the mother? That you're the mother. What a, what a couple good looking kids here. You've done a great job. It's the Lord. Your mother's really been a great person for you, hasn't she? Come on over here. What do you want to do with your life? Live for Jesus. Wow. How old are you? 17. So you're going to school? You in college or what? No, I work. What do you do? Roofing. Roofing. We quit school. We were 14. You quit school? I love these two kids right here. You know, when somebody has the guts to do what you always wanted to do and didn't do, and they're here at the altar because of a mother who says it don't matter. Your past don't matter. It's your future. Wow. So what do you want to do? You a roofer too? I'm a roofer right now, yeah. And you're a roofer. So you're starting a business or what? No, my, my brother has a company that got handed down to him. And he runs it. We will do the work. Well, he works too. So then your other son has, owns the company. And where's he at? Where we, yeah, we used to be Amish. You're Amish? We used to be Amish. You used to Not be Amish. Amish. No more. Where's the other brother at? Right here. Where's the other brother? He disappeared. The rapture happened. We all missed it. <laughs> <laughs> where's the other brother? How do you get lost in a service? I don't know. He go out the door, Ken? Okay. He saw you two up here. He says, I got to get out of here. So are you saved? You know Jesus? Yes. You know Jesus? We both got baptized in January 2023. In, where at? In Missouri. In Missouri. Yeah. I mean, and you're how old? 19. 19, 17. How old your brother? Uh, 24. And you have a roofing? Roofing company. company, yeah. And what do you want to do with your life? Just follow Jesus. Do whatever comes. How many wish that when you were 19 in this age, you were thinking like this? Amen. Well, that's good that you realize that, but guess what? It, it matters if you start tonight. Make the second half of your life count. Don't live in regret. Get out of remorse. Live in renewal. Live in a renaissance. Catch a wave. Catch a wave and you're sitting on top of the world. Come on. That's the way it works. Come on, everybody. Put your hands up, guys. I'm going to touch you. There's going to be a fresh oil come on you. Psalm 92.10. David said, anoint me with fresh oil. And this oil is going to keep you in the ways of God. Should you, did, should you stray? Should you get off the wrong exit to experiment with anything? The Holy Ghost will always bring you back on the main line. In other words, the devil can never have you. Do you hear me? The devil can never have you. God's going to give you both a, both a coat of many colors. And you'll never beg. You'll never have to beg. Mm. I thank you for these brothers. I thank you for the, the life and the seeds of the mother that's been sown. And God, I pray your mighty anointing fall on these kids. Give them a Nehemiah anointing. Give them a Nehemiah team. Let them be builders of faith and builders of lives, not just buildings. Give them a heart for people. Always a heart for people by the Holy Ghost. Oh. How Jesus loves, come on, how? Gee, he's the brother right here. You're the brother. Oh, come on, how? Gee, Jesus. Come on up here. Bring her up here. Jesus. Jesus. Precious Jesus. Water. Come on, how? What's happening here, man? What's happening? I lost my, my two sons. 
two sons. In my life of sin. In your life and of sin. Yeah, and um, my broken heart from in the past keeps um mm. affecting mm. my my relationships with them, and mm. I want God to heal it so that I can enjoy them. This is where it matters what church you go to, right here. This is what matters what teaching you sit under, right here. What's your name, sweetheart? Aubrey. Aubrey, beautiful name. And this is your daughter now? Yes. Is this your last? I knew Jesus when she came. <laughs> you didn't know Jesus with the other two? Yeah. Right. How did they pass? They're still here. Oh, they're still here. No, no, they're here. <laughs> and just the places in my heart, they bring shame mm. and, and guilt. Mm. And I just always am like afraid. You know what though? Hey, hey, mm. hey, but God breaks the curse. Right. He breaks the generational curse. Mm. And he's going to break it right here. And those sons of yours, they're coming back to you. There's going to be a reu reunion. I believe this. The prodigals are coming home. <laughs> Somebody shout at the prodigals. <laughs> They're coming home. They're coming home. And how Jesus loves. Come on, everybody. How It is no secret, it is secret. What God, Terry, what come on. God can do. Come on, what he's done for others. What he's done for others. Come on, he'll do for you. He'll do for you. Arms wide open. Oh, the power. Let her go. The power's on her. Let her go. It is no secret. Come on. Come on. What God can do. What God can do. Everybody, it is no secret. Come on. It is no secret. done for others. People say, why do you sing so much? Because I don't have the answers. And I believe in his presence more than I believe in me. Amen. I, I need to say what I have to say, but I'm not here to hear me. Too many preachers want to hear themselves. It's about the anointing. Amen. It's about the presence. I told the story, and it's true. We get so many telemarketers in our, where we live. I don't know how they even get my number. but And I, I have the greatest pleasure when I answer the phone. I'll say, lose my number. <laughs> it just feels so good to say that. Lose my. And I don't have to. It says unknown caller or possible scam. And sometimes I just feel like telling somebody that. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, this is. I'm calling for the hearing aid. So lose my number. Look at me. Lose my name. Lose my name. 
Say, the Holy Spirit touched me. Jesus healed me. Let all of the trails of your improvement go to the, his feet. See his feet. Rub his feet. Put oil on his feet. Humble yourselves before a holy God. Mm. I have this anointing. I have that anointing. I'm a prophet. I'm an apostle. I'm a bishop. Slow down. Slow down, sir. Slow down. Who are you without him? You're nothing. That's why Paul said, I'm an apostle. And he would say, a servant of the Most High God. Jesus came with a towel wrapped over his hand. He came riding on a donkey, not a horse. Be sensitive with people. Care about them. People are fighting immeasurable battles. The church isn't really, we're doing our best. Every church is, I'm sure. We've got a bit better at preparing pe people for what's coming. Not for what was. I'm appreciative for all the people that we can talk about, the revivals. That's not today. We're facing stuff like this. She's laying on an old wooden stage here. No, no padding. And there's several of you that could be here doing the same thing. If you'd leave, go. Healing could happen. If you'd leave, go. We're here to help you. So one of these meetings, it's got to be, you got to just leave, go. And trust him. Or you end up a casualty. And you don't want to be a casualty, do you? Going into the ministry don't solve everything. People get into the ministry to get away from themselves. YWAM, founded by Lauren Cunningham. I used to do training for Lauren Cunningham and his, some of his YWAM bases. He had to start a whole nother school because the students who were, were coming there to be a missionary were so wounded themselves. So he couldn't train them for ministry. They had to go through this healing school just so they could be prepared for mission work. Take every moment of services that you're in. Oh, God touched me tonight again. You may have heard the same sermon before. Oh, Lord, touch me again. It's still your word coming out of a different set of lips, but touch me again. How do you know it's time to leave a place when you overanalyze the preacher? I go to the restaurants that I really, really like. I don't even think about the, I don't even think about stuff. I just, you know, I mean, I, I trust the place. As you know the chef, you trust the place, you go there. If I have to analyze the chef every time I go there, it's too much work to go there then. Listen to yourself. Your, your, your own spirit will tell you, I'm, it's time to leave. It's the kind of somewhere I can just rest in the, in the anointing with the music, with the preacher. You fight out here. You don't go to church to fight. Do you hear me tonight? Come on, say, there's a place for me. And if it's where you are, so be it. Stay there. Stay there. Support that church, that pastor. Give your money there. But get behind it. He needs your help. But if you're going there and it's kind of like, eh, three out of four sermons, don't do it. Then it's a sign that, you know, You've outgrown that. He served his purpose. The church has served his purpose. When you start heading for the door so nobody can see you, and you don't want to hug anybody, it's a sign something's lifting. It's not the end of the world. God's just taking you to a place maybe now where you can give more or receive more. But I'm thankful that you come out to these services on here in because I never know where we're going to be. And you find us. You're a very intelligent people. How many use your computer to get here? Let me see. How many use your... Oh, my God. How many, get, how many check our website? Do you check our website? How many get our phone calls? Okay. How many get the, the, the uh, emails and Facebook? And 
power of God's on you, sir. He's really, he's really done a lot of work in you. He's really still. Jeremiah chapter 1 is for you. I want you to read Jeremiah chapter 1 closely. Before you were in your mother's womb, he knew you. But then the Bible says he will root out, he will pull down, he will break up, he will destroy the, re- the whatever had you. But there's a verse at the end of that in chapter 1. It says, I will begin to build in you. And the master is building in you. Don't you ever doubt it. Just because there's still traces of yesterday. That has nothing to do with the building that God's going to do with you. He's fertilizing you. You humbled yourself to be here tonight. You get ready. You get ready. He's going to call for you. You're being seated right now. You're being prepared right now. Enjoy the moment because there'll be a day when you will be so busy. You won't know which place to go. And you're going to go where chains drop and knives fall on the ground. And needles, hypodermic needles are laying in this alley and that alley. And you're going to take a team into dark places. And you're coming out with the spoils of war. Somebody shout the spoils of war. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, give him a mighty shout. Put your hands up. You're fighting for your husband tonight. You're fighting for him. You're fighting for him. You love this man. You love this man. You got a hold of him. The Bible says they wrestled for the body of Moses. And you're wrestling for the body of Jason. And you're going to win. You're going to win. This is a fixed fight. Somebody shout fixed fight. This is a fixed fight. And there's people here that know about this. They're supporting you. They're encouraging you. Just receive it. Just receive it. But get ready for a new Jason. He's coming back different. You're going to have to adjust to the new Jason. Because he's going to surprise you. You've been always leading the charge. But he's going he's gonna to pass you by. Did you ever hear the road runner? Mimi, did you ever hear that road runner? That's Jason that just passed you up. Get ready for that. Get ready for that. Get ready for that. Get ready for that. We give you praise. We give you praise. That's the Holy Ghost. No more abuse. No divorce. No separation. No feeling of betrayal. A new covenant. And a new name will I write upon you. Revelation chapter 1, chapter 3. I will write upon you a new name. And a new name in the pillar in the temple of my house. I will put a new name on Jason and on Lauren. And everybody will see it. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on, give him a mighty, mighty praise. What's this here? Hey, we're going to pray over this COVID. What, what's this going on? Tina. 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 Give me the note. Okay. Let's get together here a little tighter. Come on. I want you to put your hands high in the air. And I want you to listen. I'm going to have you listen to what I say. And then I want you to repeat what I pray. Because I want to know that there's a remnant in Pittsburgh that's fearless. Amen. We found out in this pandemic, so many people, so many leaders... They couldn't protect their people because they were full of fear themselves. It's time for you to rise up here and tell the devil, you're not doing this again. Come on, put every hand up in the air. We're going to do this COVID cleansing. That's it, COVID cleansing. COVID cleansing. Come on, say, my body is a temple of God. My body is a temple of God. Occupied by the Holy Ghost. It's sanctified. I'm consecrated. I'm set apart for God. And I declare tonight that the devil can have no part. No matter who he uses. No matter what disease. What politician. What the newscasters say. Anybody in my friendship circle. 
I refuse to be influenced by this contraband, by this politicized atmosphere. I live by the word of God. And I will stand strong that God is my strength and he is my shield. In whom shall I be afraid? That one puts a thousand and two puts ten thousand. And I believe in the blood. I put it over my family. I draw a bloodline around my house. Everyone that knows me by name, I declare their freedom. And this nonsense and this news, no matter how it's spread, will not come near my dwelling place. I declare I've been set free from the lies of the devil and the deception of people. I'm here to build the kingdom. And I will do that until the day that I meet the master. Now say this. He has begun a good work in me. Come on, say it's a work of grace. It's a, it's a work of the anointing. And he's going to continue that work until the day that I see him face to face. I will not pick up any transfers. I will not pick up any My discernment is being sharpened. I know who to stay away from. I am not going to buy into their lies, nor will I yield to their fear. I surrender to the written word of God. And I will read Luke 10, 19. I will tramp on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means. I said by any means shall harm me or my family in Jesus' name. Give God a shout. Come on, give him a shout. Give him a mighty, mighty, mighty shout. This is your future bride here, right? Yes, sir. What's going on here, sweetheart? You okay? (laughs) Sorry. That's okay. You all right? This is, we've been talking about serpents. Mm-hmm. He had given me that scripture. Mm. The last week, I've been having dreams of snakes. <laughs> so many curses have been spoken over me. And That's so how, many curses. how the, uh, the enemy fights me, is my mind. <laughs> hard to yeah. discern stuff. See, she's saying what's really happening to a lot of you. Yes. There's only one answer for this. Not more church. More of you in that written word. I, I couldn't be here. I mean, the stuff that comes against me, oh my. The voices that I hear, oh my. Before you get to a platform, you have to win a lot of battles. You gotta stay healthy. You gotta stay strong. You gotta stay clean. I don't wanna be in a meeting and give anybody cooties. I went to Billy Burke service and got cooties. <laughs> not on my watch, not, as, not by, by the grace of God, by the grace, by the grace. We all have to try a little harder because you represent him. We all do. Yep. Yep, yep. And thank God for the people that are around you that help you. I couldn't be here without a great wife, great family, great people that pray. I couldn't do this. I've been given a lot of freedom to do this. Mm -hmm. I grew up with a prayer cover. My grandmother put a prayer cover. She had to confuse a lot of devils in my life, I'll tell you that. (laughs) And when she left, when she checked out here several years ago, I thought, oh, Lord, who's going to be that cover? Because I knew that I got away with a lot of stuff because of that cover. Be a cover for somebody. 
Don't say, well, they'll learn. Don't do that. Well, they'll find out. Don't do that. Cover them. Cover people. Well, some people have to learn the hard way. Stop it. Cover them. Cover them. Well, sometimes, you know, they have to learn the hard way. Stop it. Stop it. Cover them. Cover them. David said they gave David three judgments. He said, I choose to fall into the hands of a living God. I choose to fall into the hands of a merciful God. Be that way. Be that way for people. And you're going to need that yourself. Let's put your hands up. We're going to close. We're going to go out with a great song. I'm not sure which one yet, but we're going to go out with a great song. <laughs> I love all of you. I do. I love being here with you really do please read your Bible please keep what you're getting here it's not my job to keep it it's your job to keep it I will pray for you as I pray for Pittsburgh Mm. I pray for each person here Holy Spirit I pray for each person that you'd cover them Oh, more than they've ever been covered. I don't know if they have relatives or wives or even if they have anybody that prays for them. But I ask you to cover each of them tonight. Blanket them with your presence. Let your voice grow from the inside out. Oh, let them not be deceived or eat the bread of idleness in any way, but quicken their mortal bodies break curses and I pray above all that you alert them of the late hour in which we live oh the late hour get them extra oil quickly extra oil so that darkness doesn't put any of their lanterns out come on say it tonight extra oil oil. it's so dark out there I need extra oil so that I can meet the bridegroom so I can be on the first load out of here and meet the bridegroom. I thank you tonight, Lord, for washing me, cleansing me, saving me. And I thank you for this group tonight, these Pittsburgh meetings tonight. Bless them. Show us how to grow it, how to make it strong to affect the city of Pittsburgh and beyond. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a thunder of praise. Come on, a thunder of praise. Come on, a thunder of praise.